Good morning, my wonderful KO1 kids. How are we today? I hope that you had a marvelous Monday. And today is Terrific Tuesday. Everyone, could everyone see today is Terrific Tuesday? Oh, yes, yeah, say hi to Abby. Ellie wants to say hi. Happy Tuesday. Say hi, Jay. Okay, we're all goofy today. All right, so it is Tuesday, and we are. We are still in the month of May, 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 May. So Tuesday, May, and we're actually on May 5th, but you don't know what the pattern piece is yet, right? We don't know what it is. It is a secret and we have to reveal it in one minute. Wait, you are gonna reveal it, but wait in one minute. Ellie wants to reveal, but let's take a look behind us. Behind us, the first day of May was a story problem. Then it was a number sentence. Then it was another story problem. And yesterday was another number sentence. And the number sentence seems to be equal to the number day that it is. So yesterday's was six minus two. I'm gonna show you. It says six minus two, and that equals four. Because yesterday, Yesterday was the 4th of May. So, hmm, based on the calendar, what do we think today might be? Do you think it's going to be a story problem, my kids? Or do you think story it's, problem. You think it's going to be a story problem? Yeah. Do you think it's going to be a story problem? Yeah. yeah. All right. Reveal it, girlfriend. Remember, today is the 5th of May. Oh, it is a story problem. Let's figure it out. Okay, here it is. Sarah saw two big dogs and three little dogs in the park. How many dogs did Sarah see? All right, I'm gonna do it for you. Watch, hold this up, Jay. Jay's gonna hold this up for me. No, Jay's gonna hold this pattern piece up for me. Okay, so I'm gonna do, there were three dogs, so I'm gonna do some circles for dogs, okay? Pretend those are dogs. There are three dogs, big dogs in the park, and then there are two little dogs in the park. You see that? And then it says, how many dogs are in the park all together? So we have three on top and you're adding two. See that? You're, you have three dogs on top, three big dogs at the park and two small dogs at the park. We're doing three plus two and that is equal to five. The number five, right? So let's say it all together now. Today is Tuesday, May, hold on, we gotta get it up. Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. Terrific, terrific Tuesday. Thank you, Jason and Ellie, for all of your help. And, oh my goodness, friends, can you believe that yesterday we had 139 days of school? So who can tell me out there what comes after 139 days? It's a big number. I wonder if any of you know it out there. I'm gonna write it on my post-it and I'm gonna show you. We have been in school. We have been in school for 140 days. Can you believe that? 140 days of school on this terrific Tuesday, May 5th, we have been in a hundred and being been in school for 140 days. That is bananas. That's craziness. Okay. So my friends, we have about I don't know how many more days of school, but <clears throat> like we're not, even though we're not in the building, you know we're still learning. School is still in session. All right. So yesterday on Monday, it was a pretty nice day, a little windy, but really nice. Today's weather, I didn't even look today. Today, today's weather is going to be, oh, it's gonna be nice today too. It's gonna be partly sunny and it's gonna be in the 60s too. So it's gonna be around the same as Monday. So it's gonna be a terrific Tuesday for sure. Terrific, terrific Tuesday. All right, so as always in crew, we talk about our PBIS character trait of the month. And we are in a brand new month. We are in May. And for May, 
it is encouragement, okay? And yesterday, we read a book about um, Piggy trying to encourage Gerald to participate in, his, in, in her Piggy Day, and Gerald kind of didn't feel like it, but then he, at the end, he was encouraged to do it, right? He wanted to be with his friends. And I asked you guys, hey, tell me a time when you were encouraged, when someone encouraged you, or if somebody, or if you encouraged somebody. So today we're actually going to read a story about, it's about magic, and it's about feeling good, and it's about, it's about nice, good feelings in our heart, okay? So encouragement is always about feeling good in our heart, giving kind words, feeling kind things, feeling love and encouragement, okay? So the book doesn't directly link to encouragement, encouragement today, but it's a feel good book, right? It's a book about, um, about magic and love and compassion and caring and just feeling good in general, okay? So I don't know if you guys know it. It's a little bit of a long book. So I'm sorry if my voice is annoying. <laughs> I don't like listening to myself on the videos, but I hope you guys don't mind it. Um, it's, it's about a magic pebble. And this magic pebble is so important to my friend Sylvester. So important to Sylvester. And then something happens. And Sylvester's mom and dad get really sad. They get really sad about it. Okay? So you know what? We're going to check it out. And you know what this means? It actually has a gold medal on it. And it is, means that this book won an award. So this book was very, very, very popular and it was really very good. So we know that it's a good book. All right. So let's get into it. It's pretty long. So I hope you guys are, are going to love it just as much as I do. Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. And you know what? This story is, is about being true to yourself. So I said that it's about a feel good story and it's about feeling good in your heart but it's also about um, being true to yourself. So always doing something that you love and wanna do. So always be true to who you are. Don't change for anybody else, right? Be encouraged to do the things that make you happy. Be encouraged to accomplish the things that make you happy. So this is about Sylvester. Sylvester is right, he's actually not in this picture. This is Sylvester's mom and Sylvester's dad. And it looks like they're looking for something. I'm not really sure what, but yeah. This is about um, this is about being true to who you are and never changing what you want to do, what you want to be, and always having people encourage you along the way. Okay, Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. Here we go. Sylvester Duncan lived with his mother and his father at Acorn Road in Oatsdale. One of his hobbies was collecting pebbles of unusual shape and color. So he loved to collect pebbles. Some of my friends like to collect Pokemon cards or baseball cards or pebbles or rocks. So did Sylvester. On a rainy Saturday during vacation, he found a quite extraordinary one. It was a flaming red, shiny and perfectly round like a marble. As he was studying this remarkable pebble, he began to shiver, probably from excitement, and the rain felt cold on his back. I wish it would stop raining, he said. To his great surprise, the rain stopped. It didn't stop gradually as rains usually do. It ceased, that means it stopped really quickly. The drops vanished on the way down, the clouds disappeared, everything was dry, and the sun was shining as if the rain had never had been there. In all his young life, Sylvester had never had a wish gratified so quickly. It struck him that magic must be at work, and he guessed that the magic must be in the remarkable looking red pebble. To make a test, he put the pebble on the ground and said, I wish it would rain again. Nothing happened. But when he said the same thing holding the pebble in his hoof, the sky turned black 
there was lightning and a clap of thunder, and the rain came shooting down. What a lucky day this is, thought Sylvester. From now on, I can have anything that I want. Magic pebble is really magic. My father and mother can have anything they want. My relatives, my friends, and anybody at all can have anything that they ever wanted. He wished, he wished the sunshine back in the sky, and he wished a wart on his left hind fetlock would disappear. And it did, and he started to walk home, eager to amaze his father and his mother with his magic pebble. He could hardly wait to see their faces. Maybe they wouldn't even believe him at first. As he was crossing Strawberry Hill, thinking of some of the many, many things he could wish for, he was startled to see a mean, mean lion looking right at him from behind some tall grass. He was frightened. If he hadn't been so frightened, he could have made the lion disappear, or he could have wished himself safe at home with his father and his mother. Could have wished the lion would turn into a butterfly or a daisy or a gnat. He could have wished many things, but he panicked and he couldn't think carefully. I wish I were a rock, he said. And sure enough, he became a rock. The lion came bounding over, sniffing the rock a hundred times, walked around and around it, and went away confused, perplexed, puzzled, and bewildered. I saw that little donkey here as clear as day. Maybe I'm going crazy, he thought. And there was Sylvester, a rock on Strawberry Hill, with the magic pebble lying right beside him on the ground. And he was unable to pick it up. Oh, how I wish I were myself again, he thought, but nothing happened. He had to be touching the pebble to make the magic work, but there was nothing that he could do about it. His thoughts began to race like mad. He was scared and worried. Being helpless, he felt hopeless. He imagined all the possibilities, and eventually he realized that his only chance of becoming himself again was for someone to find the red pebble and wish that the rock next to him would be a donkey. Someone would surely find the red pebble. It was so bright and shiny. But what on earth would make them wish that this rock were a donkey? The chance was one in a billion at best. Sylvester fell asleep. What else could he do? Night came with many, many stars. Meanwhile, back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan paced the floor, frantic with worry. Sylvester had never come home later than dinner time. Where could he be? They stayed up all night wondering what had happened, expecting that Sylvester would surely turn up by morning, but he didn't. Of course, Mrs. Duncan cried a lot, and Mr. Duncan did his best to try to soothe her. Both longed to have their dear son with them. I will never yell at Sylvester ever again as long as I live, said Mrs. Duncan, no matter what he does. At dawn, they went about inquiring all the neighbors. They were asking everybody, have you seen Sylvester? Have you seen Sylvester? They talked to all the children, the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets. No one had ever seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. They went to the police. The police couldn't even find him. Well, of course not. He's a rock. All the dogs in Oatsdale went searching for him. They sniffed behind every rock and tree and blade of grass to every nook and gully of the neighborhood and beyond, but found not a scent of him. They sniffed the rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. It didn't smell like Sylvester. Even dogs went looking for him. Oh no. 
After a month of searching the same places over a month went by. Oh my goodness, friends. Imagine if somebody was missing for a month. After a month of searching the same places over and over again and inquiring of the same animals over and over again, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They concluded that something dreadful must have happened and that they would probably never see their son again though all the time he was less than a mile away. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their usual days, but their usual ways included Sylvester, and they were always reminded of him. They were miserable. Life had no meaning for them anymore. They're really sad that he's missing. All time. Night followed day and day followed night over and over again. Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. When he was awake, he was only hopeless and unhappy. He felt he would be a rock forever and he tried to get used to it. He went into an endless sleep. The days grew colder. Fall came with the leaves changing color. Then the leaves fell and the grass bent to the ground. I wonder if it's gonna snow. We're in the season of fall. What comes after fall? Winter. I wonder if he's going to get cold. Oh, I was right. Then it was winter. The winds blew this way and that. It snowed. Mostly the animals stayed indoors living on the food that they had stored up. One day, a wolf sat on the rock that was Sylvester and howled and howled because he was hungry. Then the snows melted, the earth warmed up in the spring sun, and things budded like blossoms. Leaves were on the trees again. Flowers showed their young faces. One day in May, Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife go with him on a picnic. Let's cheer up, he said. Let's try to live again and be happy even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with, with us. They went on Strawberry Hill. Mrs. Duncan sat down on the rock. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester up from his deep winter sleep. How he wanted to shout, Mother, Father, it's me, Sylvester. I'm right here. But he was a rock. He couldn't talk. He had no voice. He was a stone. Mr. Duncan walked aimlessly about while Mrs. Duncan set out the picnic food. Alfalfa sandwiches, pickled oats, sassafras salad, Timothy compote. Suddenly, Mr. Duncan saw the red pebble. What a fantastic pebble, he said. Sylvester would have loved it for his collection. And he put the pebble on the rock. They sat down to eat. Sylvester was now as wide awake as a donkey that was as ro a rock could possibly be. Mrs. Duncan felt some mysterious excitement. You know, father, she said suddenly, I have the strangest feeling that our dear Sylvester is still alive and not so far away. I am, I am, Sylvester wanted to shout, but he couldn't. If only he had realized that the pebble was resting on his back, that it was the magic pebble. Remember, he couldn't make the wish if it wasn't in his hands or wasn't on him. Oh, how I wish I were here with, the, with us on this lovely May day, said Mrs. Duncan. Mr. Duncan looked sadly at the ground. Sorry, guys. Don't you wish too, Father, she said. He looked at her as if to say, how can you ask such a question? Mr. and Mrs. Duncan looked at each other with great snow. I wish I were myself again. I wish I were my real self again, thought Sylvester. And in less than an instant, he was. So he closed his eyes and he said, I wish I were myself again. I wish I were with my mom and dad. And there he appeared. You can imagine the scene that followed, the embraces, the kisses, the questions, the answers, the loving looks and the fond exclamations. Look at that. He is back to himself. 
When they had eventually calmed down a bit and had gotten home, Mr. Duncan put the magic pebble in an iron safe. Someday they might want to use it, but really for now, what more could they wish for? They all had all that they wanted. The end. See, now they're all at home, happy, safe and sound. So my friends, sometimes it's easy to wish for things, right? It's easy to wish for, for the newest iPad, or it's easy to wish for new clothes, or it's easy to wish for a toy, right? But sometimes we have to just take what we have and just love what we have and cherish that and hold on to that, right? And, and be encouraged to be who we want to be and not try and be somebody else, right? Sylvester wanted to be somebody else and be different things and have different things. But in the end, he really should just have hoped for and been himself, okay? So my dolls, so my KO1 kids, for today, I would love for you to draw me your favorite part of this book. I'm gonna tell you my favorite part. My favorite part of this book is when the mom and the dad go on the picnic and they actually set up right on the rock and they're talking about Sylvester and Sylvester feels happy inside as a rock. And even though he, even though my favorite part isn't when he comes to be Sylvester again, my favorite part is actually when he feels the warmth of his mom near him and he feels the, you know, the happiness of his two parents being close by. That's my favorite part, okay? So I would love for you to draw your favorite part and just write a word or two um, to kind of match your picture, picture. And of course, upload it for me. All right, so that's your crew for today. I miss you all. Happy, terrific Tuesday, May, May 5th. Can't believe it's Cinco de Mayo. I wish things were open and people could go out and, and go to restaurants, but we can't. So have a wonderful, terrific Tuesday. And I will see you soon. Miss you.